All right. Now, again, today we start with or we continue with your discussion in general science with Doc H. And of course, you have seen him. He's not just a school principal. He's very talented. He's a singer. He's a dancer. I know this for a fact because I've worked with him for so many years. He's a licensed civil engineer. Of course, he is the former uh, MTOP uh, president. He is a licensed guidance professor. Uh, guidance counselor and of course he finished his MA for science education also his PhD in science education concentration in math at West Visayas State University his MED for guidance at the University of the Philippines and baka makalimutan ko ulit he considers his best achievement having of course his two beautiful and smart daughters one of them of course is now his co-teacher in Ateneo, okay? He, is, he called them his sisters, okay? Kasi halos magkakaedad lang sila. You know, Sir H looks very young. Okay, so again, we present you now with our guest lecturer, and we welcome back uh, Doc H. Okay, let's start. The first one, uh, in the following forms, our molecules are arranged. No, we knew last last uh, meeting that there were there are five uh, at least five major uh, states of matter uh, solid liquid gas plasma and bose einstein condensate or simply condensate so from all these which among them are loosely uh, have molecules that are loosely arranged take note the term that we use uh, is molecule okay molecule that are Molecules that are loosely arranged. Okay. Again, uh, when I check your answers, I check it with 20 second delay. So if I respond, I respond only 20 seconds after, no, uh, I will see your answer. So Mark already has an answer. Uh, Danica, so as a matter of protocol, please place your the number and then your answer so that we would know that your answer is from that number because of the delay. No? Oh, a lot of answers here, and the answer is uh, gas. So, of course, that is the answer. Some of you might answer plasma, and that is not difficult to understand because we presume that plasma uh, moves, uh, the, the particles of plasma moves faster than, uh, move faster than gases. However, in the stem here, we're talking about molecules. In plasma, the king of, of plasma are ions, no? uh, which is also part of molecules, but are, are not molecules uh, by definition. Uh, so exactly. No? So that is why, uh, again, the rule of the game is always look for the answer that best describes the stem. So the context clue here is molecules loosely arranged. So I think all of us have the idea, naman, no? Uh, which is loosely arranged and which is not. Again, plasma, again, it's loosely arranged, but what is clearly loosely arranged in plasma are the ions, okay? The, uh, the, uh, the ions there in the, in the plasma uh, world. However, gas here, as far as molecules are concerned, are loosely arranged, more than solid and liquid. So the, I know this is a debatable topic, but always, I, I think the cue here, because this is preparation for lab exam, is how to look for the context clues. No? Molecules loosely arranged. So if uh, particles loosely arranged, then maybe plasma can be, can be the right answer. Number two, some starch is added to hot water and shaken. The milky liquid form is known as. Some starch is added to hot water and shaken. The milky liquid form by uh, mixing starch with what hot water is what? Okay, for number two. Okay, uh, again, 20 seconds delay from the way I'm looking at your YouTube responses. Some starch is added to hot water and shaken. The milky liquid form is known as what? Colloid, solution, suspension, or an emulsion. Okay, we have uh, answers here. Um, well, those who are very fast, thank you for answering immediately as far as uh, the timeline is concerned okay there are c's a's b's so we're divided on this the answer is suspension because a mixture because suspension is mixture in which small particles of a substance are dispersed to our gas or, or liquid like muddy liquid for example 
and all the others no that you can think of that uh, are like muddy liquid so in this case hot water and uh, starch shaken together will form a suspension okay so maybe we can review this one uh, for matter which is solid liquid and gas that we focus on the most major parts so they're divided into two you have pure substances you have mixtures and uh sometimes it's very it's it's easier i don't know with you guys but i'm a more visual person sometimes it's 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 better or it helps a lot if you know more your learning modality now in my case i'm a visual and auditory person i'm not necessarily kinesthetic so whenever i prepare for exams or for board exams uh i took three board exams no so um most of the time uh it seems that i i observe that i work i learn better if there are there are colors and there are graphs and there are pictures so instead of just uh reading uh instead of just listening to or reading things no so mas maganda yung ganito i can understand more the definition if i have the graphs more so for example seeing here that pure substances uh, can be chemical elements, binary compounds, and polyelemental compounds. So it will give me the idea what are pure substances. Now here, uh, if there's a question, no, how many elements are there in the periodic table? So so far, it's not 117, but 118. I think uh, there's something new. Uh, is this one from, uh, I don't know what you call this, organ organismus. That one is 118. Then tennessine is 117, if I'm not mistaken, and so on. No? So 118 chemical elements natin as of this point. But anyway, uh, also under mixtures, you have homo, heterogeneous mixtures, colloids, and then composite materials. No, So colloids like clouds, smokes, aerosols, emulsions, or composite materials like uh, uh, wood, yeast, uh, and then dynamite. No. And then also pure chemical substances are, are subdivided to many kinds, no simple ionic salts. So for for chemistry majors or for physical science science majors, these are things that we need to <laughs> we need to memorize or at least understand. No? The glasses, polymers, how they differ from each other. So that's the most important part, not just to enumerate them, but to compare and contrast them. Okay. But more of that later. Uh, one thing very important concepts are alloys and sometimes you're asked no so, uh, yes bronze is an alloy but how is it composed no what are the elements that compose bronze so here 90 percent copper 10 percent tin sometimes they will not just ask you uh what are the elements sometimes they will ask you what are the proportion so maybe this can help no copper bronze pala is 90 percent copper and 10 percent tin brass on the other hand uh, these are the usual alloys, 70% copper, 30% zinc. And then steel is 99% iron. That's why we usually associate steel to iron, but it's also 1% carbon. Okay, and then stainless steel, uh, iron, carbon, chromium, then all the others. And then, of course, you can all, you can Google all this. No? What is important is we, we are aware of its composition and its properties and what it's used for. Especially those who are into biking, no? So I, I, I know that you know a lot about alloys. Okay, number three. In filtering a solution, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is the blank. So I, we know that one way to separate two elements or solutions uh, when you mix them, when they're mixed, is through filtering. Okay. So filtering, it depends, of course. Uh, filtering, has a, it must have a particular property for you to be able to filter a uh, solution. So in this case, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is called what? Okay. So we'll see. Uh, number three, I still don't have your answers here. In filtering a solution, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is the blank. Uh, again, maybe it will help if you go back to your experiences in your laboratory activities where you did this uh, filtration. 
Okay, so it's not just the process, but also the parts uh, of the filtration process, no? So our, our answers here are A, B, D, okay? And let's see, let's see what's the correct answer. The answer is a filtrate. So take note of this, no? The solution, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is called the filtrate, okay? And the paper, that the one that filtrates is the filter paper. Okay, and uh, and the one that the filtrate no uh, will cut no will stop from going through the funnel uh, up to the fil to the to the beaker is the solid residue. So although it's a little bit trivial, pero you know uh, sometimes questions like this uh, appear. So it's a little bit confusing because it it's a filtrate no it's a filtrate. So uh, and Sometimes we, we miss that, and we, we equate filtrate to the filter paper. Number four, let's talk about serious matter, global warming. So global warming is brought about by the increasing amount of blank in the atmosphere. What is it made of, or what is it cost? Uh, what is the cost of global warming? The increase of the amount of what, okay? So to others, this one might be, an easy answer, uh, but to others, maybe tayo with the, with the choices, no? Merong oxygen dito, nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. So what do you think is the answer number four? So as global warming, warming is concerned. Okay. Answers, we have A. What else? Miss mm. Joanne, no? Answered it fast. And then the rest, well, so, so this is nice to know that everybody is aware of this. Carbon dioxide is the reason for global warming, the increase of carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere. And uh, hanggang ngayon, uh, believe it or not, no, meron pang uh, small fraction of number of, of scientists who, who believe that global warming is not true. But... Uh, in the, in the documentation, Inconvenient Truth of Al Gore, in, in many other proof, no, graphs, uh, shown, uh, not just in, in the internet, but also in many papers, no, literatures, it really shows that there's a pattern of increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And that increase in carbon dioxide is directly proportional with the increase in temperature. And we know naman, no, the, the Earth is, even if it's big, no, it's it's big in our context, but it's also fragile, and the carbon dioxide content, when it's in, it's in with it, it, when it keeps on increasing, the temperature keeps on increasing, and even a slight increase of temperature will really change, no, the the landscape uh, in on Earth. I I have seen one when we visited, uh, when we we brought our students in Singapore. There's a science science uh, center there where it showed talaga ano ang mangyayari even if there's only a drop or an increase of one degree centigrade of temperature in the world so the species that will be killed and the increase uh, and decrease of 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 uh, water 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 tides no anyway the number five let's go to number five so it seems that everybody knows the carbon dioxide thing Number five, the air is said to be humid if it contains plenty of what? So again, we're talking about humidity here, and it said that it's humid if it contains plenty of blank. You know, plenty of blank. So humidity is associated with what? And choose among the four. Okay, let's see. Again, please uh, place the number first and then your answer so that I would know if your answer is on what number or in what number? So number five, uh, Danica answered it first. And for Danica, it's D, uh, JP, Mark, uh, Jonas, all D. Okay, that's correct. But let us discuss water vapor. Congratulations, it's correct. Humidity. So again, the question might not be this way. So what is important is understanding the concept itself. The humidity is the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. And uh, high humidity means a lot of water vapor no, in on air. And low humidity, humidity means less 
water vapor present uh, in air. So the humidity level varies with temperature. In this case, the colder the environment, the less the water vapor. And then the hotter the environment, the higher the water vapor content. Why is that? Because remember, water vapor is the hotter version of the H2O no, uh, molecule. An H2O molecule or water can only turn into water vapor if it has a lot of energy that is enough to turn it into uh, vapor, into gas. No? That is why water vapor represents, <coughs> uh, excuse me, high temperature. And then humidity is measured as a percentage. Now, there's such a thing as 100% humidity. What does that mean? 100% humidity means the, the air molecules can only, uh, it, it hits already the maximum amount of water vapor it can carry. So kung sabihin mo, 100% humidity, sobrang init yun. No? Uh, so 10% humidity, meaning, on, meaning to say, it, from its 100% capacity, it, it, at that point in time, 10% of its capacity uh, is filled with um, water vapor. No, I'm talking about air capacity. Okay, so number six. Number six. Let's go to number six. Why must a large force be applied to a bowling ball so it can move at the same speed as a tennis ball? So simple question, no? but uh, again, uh, this might not be simple to others. So please bear with me. But we need to review this one. Why must a large force be applied to a bowling ball so that it can move at the same speed as a tennis ball? It's a simple, practical, commonsensical question, but maybe the explanation is much more important that how, seem, how this seems to be practically uh, commonsensical. So why must a large force be applied to a bowling ball so that it can move at the same speed as a tennis ball? So bucket, why do you need to exert more force on it? Answers, Danica again, Mark, Gray, or all the three answered C. So the answer is inertia, correct. So remember, but what, what is, how, oh, wow, a lot of answers. So how is inertia related to mass? Okay, let's see. Um, mass is the amount of matter in an object. That's an elementary definition. But, uh, but the, the, the more uh, updated and elegant definition of mass is it's the measurement of inertia. Uh, maybe we can, we can discuss this one. We can say that inertia and mass are directly proportional somehow. So the higher the mass, the higher inertia, the lower the mass, the lower the inertia. So you know the inertia is the tendency of the object to continue to move at a straight path at a constant speed until such time that it is stopped no, by external force. Or it's also the ability to stay put no, until an external force will move it. So the, the object, if the object is difficult to stop, therefore the object has greater mass. If the object is easy to stop by you, therefore, the object has lesser mass. Okay? So does a bowling ball and a tennis ball have the same inertia? Um, what do you think? So do they have the same inertia? Of course, uh, the bowling ball um, has more inertia because it weighs more. No, but not really the weight that, we're, that matters the most. No, it's really its capacity to, to be stopped, no? It's its tendency, um, the difficulty for it to stop when it's moving and the difficulty for it to be moved when it is at rest. It's easy for us to move the, the tennis ball, okay? Diba? It's easy for us to move the tennis ball, but the bowling ball is difficult to move because it has more inertia. Therefore, it has greater mass. Okay, number seven. Shown are two bar magnets. What poles of the two magnets facing each other? So, anong pole to? Remember, I showed this in the first set. No? We need to understand how the magnetic field works. So, in this case, look at the look at the iron filings. So, like we can assume that there are iron filings, and there are two bar magnets, and you see the 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 architecture of the iron filings. What do you think? Are these two poles, are they east-east or west-west? East-west, west-east, north-south or north-north? 
South South, North South, or South North? What do you think? So answers for number seven. Oh, we are divided. There are C's, there are D's. They are they repelling or attracting each other by just the look of the the graph or at least the figure? Are they attracting or repelling from each other? There are A's, there are C's, there are D's. So Mark says same poles. Okay, if same poles, what does that mean, Mark? So what's your answer if it's same poles? Okay. So repulse, Mark, that's correct. But give me your, ah, yeah, si pala, si ang sabat, ang sagot, <laughs> ang sagot ni Mark. So pairing same pole, pero you answer, you answer with A. So uh, there's no east and west, of course, in our in our magnets, north south poles convention wise. So north north or south south. We don't know if it's really north or south, but at least no, we know that they're repelling. So the answer is C. Correct. Let's proceed to number eight. But they take note, huh? like poles repel and unlike poles attract each other. We're just talking about magnetic poles, no? Iba naman yung gravitational poles. Okay? So, magnetic poles, take note of this. Eight, a man weighing 700 Newton climbs a flight of stairs seven meters high. Okay? How much work does he do? So, we had work last time or yesterday. Now, this time, let's see, uh, how are we to compute work? So we know that we know the equation of work, and we hope that uh, we can still remember the concept. No? In work, there must be distance involved, and there must be force involved. You're climbing upward, simply, because stairs to seven meters high. Siya. So how much work does he do? Okay. 700, 693, 707, 4,900. And the answer is, what's our answer? Oh, medyo uh, delayed tayo, must delayed tayo kung computation. Well, guess letter C. How wild is wild? <laughs> okay. Well, guess is letter C. Okay. okay. Merong D, merong C. I like the wild guess uh, thought, the idea. So if you don't know talaga, uh, you have to guess. But the guess must be a uh, calculated guess. Sabi nila daw, especially in physics, there are many equations that are very simple. And it's either you just add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them. No, Unless otherwise, or syempre may mga ibang equations na medyo difficult. In this case, force... Uh, well, work is equal to force times distance. So all we need to do is to multiply 700 newtons to 7 meters high. So that's why the answer is 4,900 joules. So, yeah, 7 times 7. So, you know, always take note of this. If you don't know the answer, try to, for, for physics, like, I don't speak for physics because there are many, many, especially in electricity and magnetism uh, and also for, for velocities. No, there are equations where all you need to do is to divide or multiply them. So in this case, if you want to be crazy enough, make a calculated guess, either multiply or divide them. So if you divide 700 by 7, so that's 100 joules. Uh, 100, no? But if you multiply them, it's just 4,900. Okay? So, yeah, that's the guess one, the guess answer. Number nine. Oh, well, thank you, Joanne, for the equation. Don't, please don't forget the equation. Work is force times distance. And that equation is pregnant with a lot of concept, meaning to say work cannot be done if there's no distance. If distance is zero, there's no work. No matter how how heavy the load is, no? Oh, kahit, kahit pagod ka na in carrying the load, if you're not moving, then you're not working. Okay, nine. Another computation. A man with a mass of 80 kilograms What's to play seesaw with his son whose mass is only 40 kilograms? To balance the force he exerts with that of his son, how far should he sit from the fulcrum of his son if his son sits 4 meters from it? So, meron tayong seesaw. Okay. Merong fulcrum dito. Okay. So, the man has a mass 
of 80 kilograms and wants to place Hisu with the sun. But the sun is only 40. And so let's assume that the sun, the sun is here. And this is 4 meters away. So this is the sun at 40 kilograms. So saan ngayon, ilalagay natin si man with 80 kilograms para they will balance each other. Okay? So 9 answer is B. And that is uh, using ratio and proportion. Of course, there's uh, another way. What if there are many other people uh, sitting in the CISO? So this is a story on moment of inertia. But anyway, or torque, no? But we compute it this way. Uh, 40 times 4 is equal to 80 x or the question mark. And so the question mark or x must be 2 so that the torque going counterclockwise, 80 times 2 is 160, uh, is equal to the torque going clockwise, 40 times 4, which is also 160, okay, units. So thank you. I think all of us got the right answer. But what if there are other forces going down? No? So take note of, of course, we can discuss this more with a whiteboard. And then, uh, mahirap kasi, no? If you add more. Let's say, what if merong, merong another person sitting three meters away to the left, no? From the fulcrum. Uh, and may, may particular weight siya. So there, there's a way to compute that. But, of course, it's, it's the the torque going counterclockwise must be equal to the torque going clockwise and when we talk about torque that means simply the force exerted times the perpendicular distance of the object to the fulcrum we will we of course for physical size we can discuss that more in detail soon number 10 number 10 it seems that number 9 we got the right answer all of us why is the weight of an object on the moon only one system it's weight on Earth. Now, this one, remember in the first uh, set, we just computed. So if this is your weight on Earth, what is your weight in the moon? So we just divided it into six. In this case, tinatanong, ang reason bakit one-eighth lang yung weight mo sa moon kumpara sa Earth? Okay? So what is your answer? And what is the concept behind this? How would you explain why is it that on Earth you are heavier compared to that in the Moon? And why is it that if you are three times heavier when you are in Jupiter and more heavy when you are in the Sun? Uh, theoretically, the answer is, okay, our answer is B. P, B. Merong B. Most of the answers are B. May C. Okay, my, my B. So the answer is B. Uh, uh, C pala, C. Um, you know, bakit C? Okay, bakit C? Uh, the gravitational force on the moon is lesser, is weaker than that of the Earth. So in fact, weight is higher if the gravitational force where you're at is higher. So it's the reverse, no? So one six, uh, one six lang ang weight mo kung sa moon ka compared to the Earth because the moon has less mass than the Earth. So remember, the gravitational force, if you can still remember uh, ay, the, the universal law of gravitational motion of, of Newton that says that gravitational force is equal to big capital G, M1, M2 over D squared. What does that mean? that the gravitational force between the two objects is dependent partly on the mass of the object. So the greater the mass of the object, the greater its capacity to pull you down, meaning to say the greater your weight. So how many times? Well, the Earth is, is, has uh, many, time, is many times bigger, no, uh, has bigger mass, higher mass compared to the moon. And that is why the moon has lesser uh, gravitational pull and you weigh less when you're in the moon. But again, remember, mass remains. Okay, mass remains. Okay, what nala ko yung discussion ni Ma'am Mek. Uh, malakas po, ay, sorry. Uh, okay, so take note of this. It seems that this is significant to many of us because many of us answered B. Uh, 
the gravitational force of the moon is stronger than that of the earth. That is wrong. No? The gravitational force of the moon is lesser than that of the earth. It's the other way around. The greater the mass, again, the greater the mass of the object, the greater its gravitational force. The more that you weigh higher. So take note. Kung merong mass, merong gravitational force. Tayo merong mass, we also have gravitational force. But because our mass is not unlike Earth no, or Moon, our gravitational force is insignificant in compared to that of the Moon and that of the, uh, of the Earth. And we can talk about this more when we talk about Einstein's no? uh, um, law, of, uh, law that has to do with explaining gravity in another way. Okay, 11. 11. Which type of rocks is likely to be found in communities near a volcano? Okay, I believe many of us are familiar with this already. No? So, which type of rocks is likely to be found in communities near a volcano? I remember we, we failed to discuss uh, rocks no, uh, in the last discussion. So, in this case, we focus more on rocks. There are three kinds of uh, or types of rocks, and uh, so the three are here except for one. So the answer is: Is it metamorphic or is it igneous? Oh, we are still divided in number eleven. Interesting. So some answered igneous, some answered metamorphic, some answered sedimentary. Good thing nobody answered letter B, lava. Okay, the answer is igneous rock. These are rocks solidified by lava or magma. Okay. Take note, metamorphic rocks are rocks transformed uh, from uh, prehistoric rock. Okay. And then sedimentary rocks. No, uh, these are rocks uh, transformed because of gravity. No, they are sediments and they're made solid because of gravity. Okay. And uh, all other chemical reactions. Okay. So take note of this. Now all rocks, well, we I, I I can still get you some of the slides. No, I call these slides later. I call these slides as uh, cycle slides. There are many cycles, no, not just body cycles, but uh, biological cycles, but also uh, earth-wise cycle. So in this case, rock cycle. I hope you're familiar of this. Metamorphic rocks like marble uh, turns into sedimentary rocks uh, also in time. And sedimentary rocks can also turn into metamorphic rocks. So there's a cycle uh, that is that are, that is happening. All the rocks that we have seen, uh, logically, with all the billions of years that the Earth has been formed, um, these rocks experience of becoming metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous rock at one point in time in in history, in Earth history. Okay. So number 12, remaining traces of plants and animals are known as what? The remaining traces of plants and animals are known as what? Fossils, fuels, fuses, skeletons. Okay. okay. Uh, remember, we are looking for the best answer. We're looking for the best answer here. Okay, we're looking for the best answers. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> 20 second lag talaga. No? So the answers, I can see now answers, correct answers in number 11. Uh, okay, okay. So let's go to number 12. Kind of place your number first, the number that you're answering, and then your answer. So again, Adolfo this time answered, well, not just Adolfo. Well, Janine answered first, then Joanne. And the rest. So the answer is A. Okay. Remaining traces of plants. Some might have answered fuels or thought of fuels or uh, skeletons, no? but uh, fossil is the best answer. Number 13, which agency, agency takes care of proper maintenance and use of our forest, minerals, and water? Forest, minerals, and water. Thank you for your correct answers in number 12. So which agency takes care of pro proper, the proper maintenance and use of forest, many minerals, and water? Okay, medyo may lang, no? So I think everybody knows the answer. <laughs> in number 13, forest, minerals, and water. So the answer is 
DNR, correct? Okay. And then, uh, DNR is Department of Energy and Natural Resources. Sometimes tinatanong kung ano meaning ng, ng acronyms na to. Industries Department of Science and Technology. DPWH, Department of Public Works and Highways. What about NEDA? Ala, ano bang NEDA? What is the meaning of NEDA? So, that's National Economic Development Authority. So, NEDA. And meri pa, COA, uh, um, ano pa, NBI, PNP, DepEd, all these things might also be asked from you. Uh, FIVOX, di ba? So just remember the meaning and the function of all these government agencies. Okay. Uh, let's go to number 14. An opening of the Earth's crust is what? An opening of the Earth's crust is what? So, mountain, peak, valley, volcano. I think this one is Isibichi. <laughs> so, the opening of the Earth's crust, I'll proceed, uh, is volcano. And But more than the answer, letter D, uh, what is important for us to understand how it works. No? So, merong different kinds of volcano. Merong extinct, merong hot spot volcano. Ito yung dire-diretso talaga yung molten, uh, yung, yung, uh, uh, yung magma, diretso pataas. Meron din tinatawag na subduction volcano. A volcano caused by subduction. Ito yung tinatawag natin na subduction area where one part of the plate, earth's plate, is going down and the other part is uh, on top of it. And this one can cause friction which can maximize, no, uh, magma to rise up. And so it causes volcanoes. And that, that, this explains why in the Ring of Fire, there are many volcanoes because there are many subduction, subduction areas no, in terms of uh, plates. But at the same time, take note of hot spot volcanoes and extinct volcanoes. There are rift volcano, volcanoes caused by rifts. No? Anyway, so yeah, these are... Uh, what is convection currents? Now, when you say convection currents, ito yung mga moving magma and they move because of the temperature difference no uh, remember that objects uh, molecules move from hot to cold no take note of that molecules move from hot to cold and so the same thing with magma no kung merong mainit dito so it looks for place where it is cold it moves to the colder area so parang the same thing. so when you open the refrigerator take note uh, remember uh, Air molecules move from hot to cold. So to open the refrigerator, uh, most of us are saying, ah, don't open the refrigerator because the cold temperature is going out. It's not like that. Now, what is happening is the hot temperature is coming in. That's why you are trying to close the refrigerator. The same thing, you close an air-conditioned room. You close an air-conditioned room because you don't want hot air molecules coming in your air-conditioned room. Not the other way around. Not the cold... Uh, uh, molecules going out because again molecules move from hot to cold that's why convection happens okay number 15 uh oh, may nagta nagtatanong si GJ eh? GJ may diamond pa ba dyan sa mga volcanoes uh diamonds were not caused by volcanoes so uh some theories are saying that the diamonds were were caused by either comets or meteors coming in. So that's why you know, if you look at the geology of, of the Earth, diamonds are are sent on specific areas like South Africa or in, in the others. So that's why that's why they thought na baka meteors coming in. Or maybe there are some specific geological uh, activities that just happens in those places. That's why happen in those places that's why diamonds uh happen no? but yun nga, not necessarily diamond you expect no, in volcanoes but there are of course um igneous rocks there some of the igneous rocks are also valuable number 15 which process takes place with matter in a liquid phase changes to gas or gaseous phase so again the answer is evaporation okay but more than the answer i think men all of us answered it correctly but more than that, let's talk about the concept. Remember the one at the upper right? We discussed this one. Okay, we discussed this one exactly. 
sublimation, deposition. Solid to gas is sublimation. Gas to solid is deposition. We know the rest. But the, the new one here introduced is from gas to plasma, that's ionization. I told you before that plasma has to do with ions that are moving very fast. And then plasma going back to gas is recombination. Remember, if it's from plasma to gas and gas to liquid and liquid to solid, what's happening is that the molecules are releasing heat. But when it's solid to liquid, liquid going to gas and gas going to plasma, or even solid going gas, the function there is that the molecules are receiving more heat in order for it to turn from one phase to the higher and hotter phase. So that is uh, called enthalpy of the system. Now, the one at the bottom here shows you another way of showing the change of phase. Take note of the term in the process. The one in the left side uh, shows you different concepts like here. For example, from this simple graph, or like graphs more no, in explaining things, it shows, uh, the, I think the presumption here, this is water. So in one bowl of water, this is how it goes. No? As the temperature increases and uh, as you absorb heat, no? as the one bowl of water absorbs heat, so the temperature increases also in a very direct way, directly proportional. But there was, there's a point in this case, zero centigrade, where it will not, it will keep on receiving energy or heat, but it will not increase its temperature. This is the point where we call a fusion point, where it changes from ice, solid ice, to liquid water. Okay, and it takes this amount of kilojoules for it to happen for one mole of water. And when it reaches that point where it is already in liquid form, it will again absorb more heat. And then at a particular point, of course, as we expected, this is 100 degrees centigrade, or to be exact, 99.96 degrees centigrade. It will again stop from increasing its temperature, but will keep on absorbing heat. Okay, this way. This way. And for one mole of water, it will absorb 40.60 66 kilojoules of heat in order for it to turn from liquid water to gas molecules or water vapor, we call it. Then again, the temperature will increase as it absorbs energy. So now, what is the importance here? Now, remember that as what I've, I told you, from liquid to, from gas to liquid, it takes for a molecule, a mole of, wat, uh, of water to absorb more heat for it to go up. Why does it, why must it absorb heat? In order to turn from solid to gas to liquid, because remember, as more as as the higher as the higher the heat you absorb, the more energy you have, thermal energy, the more that the molecules move faster. When the molecules move faster and faster, it changes its phase. Okay, from the from solid, which is uh, where the molecules are moving relatively slower, to liquid, the molecules are moving relatively faster. And the same thing when it turns from liquid to gas. So it needs more energy for it to turn into gas and to give more freedom of movement. Now, for it to transform on the reverse side, instead of absorbing heat, it should release heat. So the same manner, uh, when, when it's gas to liquid, it should release this amount of heat, okay, 40.66 kilojoules of heat. And the same manner when it goes from liquid to, to gas. Or if, if, the, if the temperature is decreased, no? if, if you want the temperature to, to decrease, you also have to release heat. Now, that is very important in terms of entropy and enthalpy. Now, another thing, which is easier? Which takes more heat, uh, more work? Uh, turning solid to liquid or turning liquid to gas? Which takes more energy? No, to, to turn from one phase to the other. From, of, as you can notice, it's easier to turn solid to liquid or to turn liquid to solid than to turn liquid to gas or gas to liquid. As you can see here, this is the energy. No, the, longer, the longer this one, that means the longer, the, the greater the energy that you need in order to transform it from one phase to the other. That's very important, the concept, because again, we are preparing for let. Questions can be different 
the topic and the concept might be the same, but the question might be turned something else. For example, tatanong sa yo, abo na yun nga yun sinabi ko. Uh, which which takes more heat, turning solid to liquid, liquid to solid, or liquid to gas, or gas to liquid. Yon ganon. Anyway, uh, also take note of the concept of specific heat, which is the energy added to unit of mass to increase its temperature by one degree centigrade. But there's no space change going on here. Okay, the the greater the specific heat, the greater the thermal energy you need for the temperature of the substance to increase or to decrease. No, uh, the if you, if the temperature decreases, that's also the number the the heat that you need to release it. No? So this the heat that you need to change the phase from gas to liquid or liquid to gas is called latent heat of vaporization. And the heat that you need to change the phase of a substance from liquid to solid or solid to liquid is latent heat of fusion. So I hope some of you are have taken a picture of this. Some of you uh, have at least have a good review on the matter. Number 16. Number 16. Which process takes place when matter in a solid phase changes to gas, a gaseous phase without passing through the liquid state? Okay, let's see. Okay, your dry ice. No, dry ice is one example of uh, turning from solid to uh, from liquid to solid. The mothball is one example of turning solid to. Uh, uh, by the way, um, ano pala? Mothball is from solid to gas. And then dry ice is from gas to, to solid. Okay. Which process takes place? Gas to liquid. So the answer is sublimation. Okay. Gas to changes of gaseous phase. Okay. From process when matter, solid to liquid. So solid to liquid is sublimation without passing through gaseous phase. Solid when matter in a solid phase changes to uh, changes to gas, no, solid to gas, without passing to liquid state. No, confused ako doon. Kaya nga, sublimation is from solid to gas. Okay, so example is mothballs. And gas to solid, the example is dry ice. Okay, so we discussed this one kanina. So what if itanong ko, if one, two, if you want to decrease the temperature, what must you do? You will release the heat or will you absorb heat? Again, if you want to decrease the temperature of a substance, are you to absorb or release heat? Okay. If you want to decrease the temperature of a substance, are you to absorb or release heat? So the answer is, of course, you have to release heat. Again, releasing heat, decreases the temperature absorbing it increases the temperature please take note of these uh, concepts so temperature are dependent on um, on the release or or absorption of heat but what is that point where even if you are absorbing or releasing it the temperature remains these are the latent heat these are the latent heat of fusion point or latent heat of vaporization point. Okay. Number 17. Oh, thank you for your answers. Really heat. Yan. Uh, important yan. No? So please uh, put it in your mind kasi mga favorite na mga questions to eh. The release of heat means lower the, the, the lowering of temperature, the absorption of heat increasing the temperature. Uh, but there are points where temperatures don't increase or decrease anymore as you release or absorb heat. These are latent heat of fusion or evaporation. These are points where the phase is trying to change no, uh, from one phase to the other. Number 17, device used to measure temperature. The answer is thermometer, of course. We all know that. But sometimes, who knows, baka pictures will be shown to you and you have to identify what that is, that is all about. So before, it's easier to identify one one device to the other, but now they're digital. And sometimes they're all in one digital, uh, uh, what's this device? No, 
So we have temperature here, thermal scanners, but we also have this one is a barometer. This uh, or this one is this one is a hygrometer, and this one is a barometer. Okay. So this one is a hygrometer, but it also uh, gives you the temperature. Okay. Before it's really difficult to measure all these concepts, but now uh, we it's there in our cell phone, no? So we never we have some activities anymore. So that makes let that gives us less expense in terms of laboratory supplies. Number eighteen, which of the falling clouds produces precipitation? Anong nagpapa ulan? Which of the following clouds produces precipitation? Okay. So, kaya. so let's see. Napang sagot. Again, 20 seconds delay. Let's see. Cumulus, Nimbus, Stratus. So let's see. The answer is Nimbus. Okay. C. So again, no, this is grade six, grade seven. Uh, and I admit no, even I myself no forget this one because you know do, uh, it, it happened years ago, a lot of years ago, and sometimes we forget the matter, but we know we know this already, no, we can already observe that in nature. So take note of the different kinds of clouds. Uh, they are they can be combined also at the same time, no cumulus, stratos, no. Uh, so we we cumulus nimbus that that goes to show that it's raining. But well, sometimes cumulus is enough for it to show that it's raining because it's dark and and thick. No, so this is nimbus clouds. They have grayish black color. Okay. Nineteen, nineteen. Which of the following sources of energy comes from animal manure, agriculture waste, and garbage? Okay. Uh, I love discussions on energy because, well, that's that's part of my dissertation, and the energy is really uh, cool, no, to to discuss over to study. Which sources comes from animal manure, and I think we we are familiar with this. There are context clues, so the answer is uh, biomass. But more than the answer, again, maybe. Uh, maybe we can review how to differentiate the the different the different energy source. Okay, everybody knows the answer: biomass. This is how complicated the biomass can be. But you know, biomass, geothermal, water, or uh, what water or or well, water, wind. No, they uh they look different. But one thing that uh, might be similar to all the four is the use of generator. So what is important is that uh, all this, these four can turn the turbine. How? For wind, they use the wind energy, kinetic energy. For water, so the water flows from potential energy, it turns into kinetic, so it flows to the turbine, which is connected to the generator. Geothermal, what happens in geothermal in biomass is using heat, uh, using enormous amount of heat, no, in this case geothermal from the bottom of the earth, biomass by heating, no, uh, the the animal manure, agriculture waste, and garbage, heating water inside a boiler, so the the water will eventually go and pass through uh, the turbine, and the turbine because of the heat, no pressure from heated water, it will also turn the generator on. And the generator will eventually convert uh, or induce electricity from it. So it's nice also to see the difference, but also the commonality among in between the two, the, the four, among the four. 20. Let's talk about geothermal plants. I think I gave you the answer already. Makes use of thermal energy from where? The answer is underground. Okay. There are many kinds of thermal plants, but this is one thing that the Philippines must be proud of because. Uh, the Philippines is one of the forerunners of geothermal power plants. I am really even confused why uh, less and less budget is given to geothermal power plants. That's one thing, one natural resource that we are very rich at. No, 
So we have people from Negros would know how important thermal power plant in Panimpin power plants. People in, in the Luzon area, in Albay, and also those in, in, uh, in, in eastern Visayas, they know how important geothermal power plants for them. Okay? Heat underground. Number 21, which type of energy is present in a storage battery? We discussed this yesterday, so I presume we know already the answer. Uh, which type of energy is present in a store battery, storage battery, either wet cell or dry cell? So the answer is chemical energy. So the one on top here is a dry cell battery. And then the other one at the bottom is a wet cell battery. So the only difference is the other one is dry, the other one is, is wet or using liquids. But the, the concept is the same, no? Uh, there's a, the, the, uh, the difference in the two chemicals present in these two batteries uh, will cause the, elec the electron to move thus creating electrical energy okay so number 22 which kind of energy does food contain thank you for your answers which number 22 which kind of energy does food contain maybe another one that we all also discussed yesterday so i'll spin this out the kind of energy does food contain pedding may mga ibang Ibang food na may nuclear energy dyan, believe me you, no? mga radiation, radiated uh, food. Meron din iba na uh, merong ibang passing energy but mainly it's electrical, di ba? And biology majors know why, no? And especially, especially if we talk about ATPs and metabolism. So it's basically we eat in order for us to produce heat and that heat is converted to uh, a lot of, a lot of all of forms of energy. Okay, uh, transform into a lot of forms of energy. Okay, and so that's why when we talk about uh, I need energy, so we need carb, I need fats, uh, and all those things. These are sources of energy. Okay, twenty-three. Which of the following is an element? Uh, another easy thing. By the way, thank you for your answers. Again, no. I would like to invite everyone to focus on on the choices the right and the wrong choices and also on the the concept no not necessarily on the answer but if you are wrong please try to give a footnote on that the pick and maybe invest more time to review over it which of the following is an element the answer is nitrogen correct okay answers are all correct Okay, so an element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down to other substances by physical or chemical means. So there are, uh, as what I've said, there are about 118 known elements as of the moment, uh, as of this time, no? And uh, we expect more elements to be discovered uh, by scientists in the laboratory. 92 of which occur naturally, they're all discovered, but those upper, upper 92, uh, they are they are discovered no uh, in a very in, in the laboratories most of the time, and the element has con uh, a unique name and symbol. Okay, okay, number twenty four. What is the lowest part of the atmosphere? What is the lowest part of the atmosphere? Lowest part of the atmosphere. Again, this is a review on uh, last time or yesterday. So the lowest part is the troposphere. We're talking about atmosphere here. Huh? So troposphere. By the way, the picture is not on scale. Imagine that the atmosphere of the Earth is just here, very thin here. Parang onion skin lang kalaki compared to the Earth, if this is how big the Earth is. But its parts are like this, pinalakilan natin para clear sa atin no, where these are uh, placed. No? What are they for? So troposphere, where planes usually pass. And then stratosphere, ito yung mga weather balloons. And then usually higher than stratosphere. A little bit higher is the mesosphere where comets uh, are burnt. 
and then Aurora Borealis and the uh, Aurora Australis at the southern portion of the Earth. Excuse me, sorry. Um, in the thermosphere from the term itself, thermo, and then exo from the term ex, no? Exo, uh, outside, no? Meaning these are where the satellites are, okay? And uh, of course, there is the outer, the outer space. Pure water boils at, this is a little bit tricky. Pure water boils at, oh, not necessarily tricky if you're familiar with the, with the boiling point of water. So the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. Okay, that's the easy part. But sometimes you're asked, no, what is the condensation point of water? The point where it transforms from liquid to uh, from from gas to liquid. Okay, so the condensation point is also one hundred degrees centigrade. Take note of that. That is where at one hundred degrees centigrade or ninety nine point nine That is where water changes from gas to liquid or liquid to gas. So it's the boiling point and also the condensation point. In the same manner, the zero degree centigrade. Is also the freezing and the melting point of water. But take note also of its Fahrenheit equivalent, you know? 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If you memorize this, it will come in handy later on. No? If questions like what is the what is the boiling point of water in Fahrenheit? May mga ganun. Or what is the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit? So at least we know. We're familiar with the, the with the number. Okay. Uh, also, there's no excuse. No, whatever your your major is, there's no excuse of you not knowing how to convert no temperature scales no from centigrade to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to centigrade. We also know that if you convert centigrade to Kelvin, we just add two seventy three. Or if you're in engineering, we say 273.5 degrees in order for centigrade to be converted to, to Kelvin. Sometimes we convert Fahrenheit to Rankine, no? another temperature scale, Rankine. So we just add 460 degrees. So, But this one is very important. Please try to remember the equation on how to convert Fahrenheit to centigrade and vice versa. Okay, also take note of some important temperatures, okay, especially the one of waters. So I've discussed the Fahrenheit centigrade relationship, but please also take note of absolute zero. You know, absolute zero is zero Kelvin. And can, as you can see here, Kelvin is the only scale with no degree there because it's an absolute number, okay? But zero Kelvin also means negative 273.15 degrees centigrade or negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Rankine. Okay? But Kelvin is the SI unit of temperature. Okay. So the most abundant gas in the air is, that's number 26. What's the most abundant gas in the air? The most abundant gas in the air. Okay, so you have carbon dioxide, helium, nitrogen, oxygen. We're talking about gas in the air, not uh, in soil or, or in space. But most abundant gas in the air. So space naman, siyempre iba. No? We know what is the most abundant gas in the air. No? Hygen, not the next helium, etc. But then, if you talk about soil, uh, well, it depends on what soil you are talking about. But on air, it is correct, nitrogen. Some answered uh, oxygen. Oxygen is just 21% on air. Nitrogen is 78%, as it, at least no, of a, based on my source. And then argon is 0.9. And then you have uh, 0 to 4% for water vapor and carbon dioxide, 0 0.037.
Okay? So it's important for us to see not necessarily the exact percent, but at least the proportion. So 78% or almost 80% for nitrogen, etc. And this one changes in time. I remember there were moments in the Earth's uh, history where oxygen is three times as much. And sometimes oxygen is almost uh, absent at all. Okay. So at least now, our 21% is enough habitable for humans and other mass and animals. 27. Okay, let's see if we can, uh, if we can uh, apply what we have learned yesterday or what we have reviewed yesterday. If there are nine protons in the nucleus of an atom, how many electrons are there in the shell? In the atomic shell, pila or how many do we have as electrons? If the protons in the nucleus of an atom is, 19, is nine, or nine, it counts. The answer is, it's either you know the answer or you can give a crazy guess. So the answer here is nine because in normal terms, the number of protons the same as the number of electrons. Okay. So some crazy answers is C, which is twice as much as the number of protons. By the way, something very interesting with, with electrons and protons. No, electrons are far smaller than protons, thousands smaller than protons. Uh, and uh, if, if, the, uh, if the nucleus where the proton is, it's as big as my fist. So the electron is about a kilometer away from my fist. So that's how, how vacuum almost almost made of space, no? Uh, an atom is. Okay, 28. Which layer of the atmosphere returns radio and TV broadcast back to Earth? So which layer of the atmosphere returns radio and TV broadcast back to Earth? Oh, this is interesting. What do you think? Is that part or layer of the atmosphere that returns uh, radio and TV waves back to Earth? It's 28. Okay. So, may mga sagot. The first to answer is Mark. Then Ramon. With different answer. Then Ray. Tatlo sila. Iba-iba yung answer. Ano kaya? But that's nice, no? You guess. And uh, when I took the exam, the let, yeah, I also guessed some of the <laughs> items because I didn't know them. So, Sometimes calculated guesses are help. So let's see. But I'm sure others are sure of their answer. So let's see. The answer here, okay, is ionosphere. Okay. Remember? So, uh, oh, wala palang wala dito yung ionosphere, no? Uh, ionosphere is somewhere at the middle of... Uh, Mesosphere and thermosphere. So, nasa mesosphere and uh, ther mesosphere and thermosphere. Somewhere here, yung ionosphere, which is a subpart, no, a subpart, a sublayer of an atmosphere. So, ionosphere is a critical link in the chain of Sun-Earth interaction. This region is what makes radio communications possible. Okay, so somewhat partly in the thermosphere and mesosphere. So I forgot to include that in the, in the parts. Okay, 29. Which of these properties can identify a substance? So meaning when you see this property, regardless, uh, even if you don't know or if you haven't seen the substance, the substance, you would know what kind of substance it is. So a property among the four that will give you the substance. This is interesting, an item. Which property can identify a substance? Is it color? When you see the color of the object, alam na kung ano substance yun? Is it density, mass, bigat ba, or volume? Ang volume ba ng isang substance, malalaman mo na kung anong substance yun. Okay? We have uh, faith and race answers, which are different than Leian. Uh, Mary. Okay, iba-iba yung sagot natin. Pero this is an interesting 
uh, topic. No? So the answer is density. Bakit density? Bakit density ang makapag-identify ng substance even if hindi mo pa makita yung substance? So this, look at the table here, table 1.4, where uh, you see the density of different substances at 20 degrees centigrade. Kasi density changes in terms uh, when the temperature changes. Now how? Because if the temperature is lower, then the, the molecules of the object, most of them except water, at a particular point. Now, the molecules also uh, essentially are going together, no, near to each other. So the density becomes high. But if the temperature is increased, then the density becomes less. That's one concept that we need to understand also. All we need to do is just, just imagine the molecules. If it's hot, then the molecules would like to move more. Therefore, making the substance less dense. Kasi lumalaki yung volume. Remember the equation of density? Volume is inversely proportional to density. So, but if the density, the, the temperature is is low, then the molecules would like to be with each other more. Just like tayo din, no? Kung cold, we want we want to be uh, less open, no? Because we want to to secure our heat. So in this case, at twenty degrees centigrade, these are the densities, no? For water, the density is one point zero zero, okay, at four degrees centigrade. Uh, Interesting with water is that beyond 4, below or above 4 degrees centigrade, water expands already. But the rest, the lower the temperature, the, more, the closer the molecules together, the lesser the volume. The greater the temperature, the more, the, the greater the volume. So in this case, by just looking at the density, you know what that is all about. So if it's 2.70, the assumption here is there's no other substance that has a density of 2.70 at 20 degrees centigrade aside from aluminum. So uh, Archimedes, when he was asked to check whether the, the crown is really made up of gold pure or not, he used this concept in order to identify if it's really gold or not. So gold's density is 19.3, meaning to say it's 19.3 more dense than water. Remember, water is 1.0. So uh, platinum is the densest from the list. What is the least of all is charcoal. And remember, if it is less dense, it floats the, in liquid no? that is uh, denser than it is. So charcoal floats, remember? If charcoal is placed with water, in water, then it will float. If ethanol, if, if ice is placed in water, remember ice is lesser in terms of density so therefore that's why ice also floats in water okay number 30 water rises faster in what oh, there's a concept i miss why it rises faster uh, on a particular situation but it rises faster in what what kind of situation okay so that's 30 water rises faster in what Uh, I'm still waiting for answers. Okay, water rises faster in, remember yesterday, it rises faster in very fine tubes. Okay, so the answer is D. The answer is D. Remember the one I showed to you, a uh, list of tubes? The thinner the tube is, the higher that water rises. Of course, if it's mercury, it subsides, no? it depresses down. So the, the concept here is capillary action. Okay, very good. So again, no, if your answers are different, uh, if your answer is different, then try to figure it out why. So 